You're listening to the NFL Draft Bible Podcast Network, part of Sports Illustrated, giving you daily NFL Draft, Dynasty, and Debbie Fantasy Football Podcasts. Welcome into the Draft Seminar presented by Sports Illustrated's NFL Draft Bible Podcast Network. I'm your host, Matt Hicks, the FF Educator, joined as always by my co-host, John Lobb, the Gridiron Scholar. Class is officially in session, and we are talking about one of my favorite under-the-radar players in this year's draft, Jarrett Patterson. John, are you just as excited as I am? I am, my friend, and as I was researching Jarrett Patterson this week, And as I was watching the film, I kind of had flashbacks to two other Buffalo Bill prospects, Bulls. Sorry, I got NFL on my mind. Buffalo Bulls prospects that I thought about in the past. Quarterback Tyree Jackson and wide receiver Anthony Johnson. Unfortunately, neither of those two players have NFL stardom or fantasy football, you know, stardom as I had hoped. But maybe for Jared Patterson, we have a different prospect and a player who might be able to reach his ceiling here. Very interesting background. If you don't know, his brother James Patterson is his twin, and his brother's a linebacker also on the Buffalo Bulls football team. Now, when they were being recruited by Buffalo, the Bulls could not give out a scholarship to both players. They chose to give the scholarship to James at linebacker. And his brother is such a good guy and wanted to play football with his brother so much. He actually took a gray shirt season and waited until the spring when Jarrett could be extended a scholarship also. So both of them still play on Buffalo. Well, obviously James does now. He's not the prospect of Jarrett, but Jarrett's going to the NFL. His senior year in high school, Jarrett was the team's player of the year with over 2,000 yards rushing and 23 touchdowns. They eventually both ended up on the field at Buffalo 2018 as freshmen. And Jarrett was an immediate star, Matt. He led the team in rushing with over 1,000 yards. He was the MAC freshman of the year and second team all MAC. But 2019 is the year that he exploded on the college fantasy football screen as well as NFL draft rankings. He had 1,799 yards rushing, which was a school record, and he was named All-Mac first team. In eight games, he had over 100 yards rushing, and he was offensive MVP of the Makers Wanted Bahamas Bowl with 173 yards and two touchdowns. And last year, Matt. For a member of the MAC Conference to be named second team All-America at running back is really an amazing accomplishment when you think about it. He was also named MAC Offensive Player of the Year and All-MAC First Team. He eclipsed 1,000 yards in only six games, and he averaged 7.6 yards per carry. He also logged three consecutive 1,000-yard seasons in his career on campus. Matt, you already said you liked him. Why don't you tell us what you liked about his film work? You got to start here with the strength. You see it right off the bat. Pedersen has a real domination in between the tackles. You know, when you're looking at Mac prospects or any group of five running backs, you want to see them absolutely dominate their opponents, not just beat them. And he runs over linebackers. He physically throws defensive backs out Uh of his way. On more than one occasion, I love his contact balance, John. It often takes three, four, even five guys in a pile to drag him down, and he's still going to fall forward. Give him an 88 in strength and contact balance. I like his athleticism. Now, he's not somebody who jumps off the screen right away as a pure athlete to you, but he has what I call subtle athleticism to his game. He is agile. He makes space when it's tight. And so he's able to do a little bit more than you would necessarily expect a pure, you know, power, pure strength runner to do. Now, he can be pretty explosive off the line of scrimmage. It's a little inconsistent, but when he sees gaps open, he'll hit them hard. He'll burst through those. 
I give him a 70 for explosiveness, 80 for athleticism, and I give his vision a 77. Now, at times, John, he does catch himself up by thinking just a little bit too much behind the line of scrimmage, but other times he does really well to navigate, particularly in between the A and B gap. He finds space in the field, and once he hits that second level, he does have enough speed and acceleration to have that breakaway potential at the MAC level. So that's your overall uh, breakdown here of his film. I have a projection for him to be a flex filler, which is a good position to be in. You need these guys on your fantasy football roster. But, John, let's flip on the tape. Let's put these words to action here. I'm looking forward to it, my friend. All right, and as always, the tape is provided by Brandon Lejeune, Debbie Deep Dive on YouTube and Twitter. And you can see right off the bat here, you know, he's not a speed guy per se, but he has the ability to get down the field here, and he breaks off a big run against Kent State. Now, he's going to stay in between the tackles a lot, John, but look at that straight line acceleration. He finds gaps in the defense, and when he gets them, he's gone. Whoa! He just, he's outrunning all these guys. You know, it's interesting. He's a power back in a small compact body. If Look you have contact watched, balance, you got to love it. Oh my god, people might think he's like a speed third down back, but he's really a power back. Absolutely, and you could see John here in this Kent State film what I'm talking about that subtle athleticism. He's not breaking anybody out of their shoes, but he has good enough body movements and enough fluidity in his hips to get guys just to bite enough so that he has the room to beat them. And he does something here that I would be important at the NFL level. I think he can hide behind big offensive linemen, and he has good enough vision to find the crease. But I worry about his breakaway speed at the NFL level. Yeah, breakaway speed, absolutely a concern here overall when it comes to translation to the next level. But you have to love that contact balance. John, I know I'm going to be excited to talk about this part of it. Tell me about his production metrics and how they translate for you. You consider he basically played two and a half seasons at Buffalo. He ran for 3,884 yards, but the only, one of the concerns I have, he only has 20 receptions. So for his yards from scrimmage is 4,155. But let's put it into context, Matt. When you have a dominant offensive line in a conference like the MAC with a great running back, why are you going to throw the pass when you can just dump it off to Jarrett Patterson. So there is some context here why his receptions are so low. 6.1 yards per carry is nice. 53 touchdowns. Now, he is 5'9", 195. But he plays big. And if you're not watching the film, you might have the wrong perception of Jarrett Patterson as a prospect. Yards from scrimmage, 1,072 last year which is really impressive. But his scrimmage yards dominator is off the hook. 32% last year. No one could stop Jarrett Patterson in the MAC conference. Remember, the MAC conference only played a conference schedule. So we didn't see him play any team outside the MAC. However, Matt, I like him too, and I'm rooting for this young man. But I've got to address two challenges that I see in the production. Last year, 710 yards and 12 touchdowns came in two games. Bowling Green, he had 301 and four touchdowns. And Kent State, he had 409 and eight touchdowns. Now, as a UConn fan, Bowling Green and Kent State are atrocious on defense. And I can say that because I've seen really bad defense played by the UConn Huskies over the years. So that's a little bit of a concern from a model. What I wanted to do more importantly, if I've done a little research, Matt, I went back to group of five running backs in the last three years. And how did they do as fantasy producers? And Matt has not heard this. So I'm going to give Matt brand new information. And I'm going to post this on Twitter very soon, my friends. Since 2018, that's three NFL fantasy seasons. There have only been 14 runners who produced a top 24 PPR scoring at the NFL level. Aaron Jones has three of them. Kareem has two. 
as well as Marlon Mack. Here's what's shocking, Matt. Three of the players from the group of five or below were undrafted free agents. Austin Eckler, James Robinson, and Isaac McKissick of the Washington Football Club this year. J.D. McKissick, who was a wide receiver. He wasn't even a running back in college, <laughs> you know. So, the, of those who were drafted, only nine seasons out of 72 have been produced from a group of five running back. That is a 13% chance. And the other one is David Johnson at Northern Iowa. The only reason I bring this up, because obviously – there are productive group of five backs. But if you're if you need running backs, you can't draft Jarrett Patterson and Kenneth Gainwell. The odds of both of them hitting and producing a top 24 season in the NFL draft as a fantasy football asset are astronomically low, Matt. Take one. You, I, 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 you might get the guy but it would be hard to get both of them. I'm rooting for Jarrett Patterson. I like the young man. He's got good film, nice production model. He runs well between the tackles, which I like out of a group of five runners. But he does have a long road to climb, my friend. I'm rooting for him, but I'm not sure. All right, there you have it. Jarrett Patterson out of Buffalo. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Draft Seminar. You can put those pencils down because this lesson is over. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, we appreciate